Hello, this is Andy Ford Video, and we're going to look at making a stroke animation with a shape layer. Our goal is going to be to create a stroke, animate that stroke, duplicate it out as needed, and alter those copies for a cool effect. So first we'll click the arrow by the Add button here, and we'll add a group. That way we can keep our project neat. Then we'll go back and add a shape. In this case, let's use an ellipse, but any shape can do. Then we'll add a stroke, and we can alter that stroke as necessary, such as increasing the width. Next, we'll go back and add trim paths to the group. We do this because if we want to add some life to our stroke animation, we can alter the speed at which it appears, moves, and disappears. So to do that, we'll set a keyframe for 0% for our end value of trim paths. Go later in our timeline, set a keyframe for 100%. We can ease those keyframes. And then we'll do the same with our start trim paths value. Keyframe for 0 and 100 and ease them. And then we can go into the graph editor where we can alter the speed for this cool effect. When we have both our start and end values of trim paths selected, there will be two graphs here. So we can pull one graph to the left and one to the right. So we'll have two different speed curves in our graph. And so when we play that, you'll see what we did with the alterations on speed. And this is a fairly common animation style that you've probably seen before. And we can make it even better when we add more strokes to it. So now we can take our entire group, select it and duplicate it. And now this will be group two. And we can parent certain values of group two to our original group one and then alter them accordingly. So for example, if we want to have a larger circle stroke, we would parent the group two size property to our original size property. Use the pick whip for that. And then we can append any change we want. So for example, we can add our X and Y position adjustments within array brackets. For example, we can do plus bracket 50 comma 50 close bracket and now we'll have a larger circle based on those inputs, as you can see here. Likewise, if we want a different width on this stroke, we can parent the stroke width from group two to group ones, and then we can append the necessary math to make it larger or smaller. Let's say we want this stroke to be slightly ahead or behind of our original stroke. We can go to the offset property under trim paths, and we'll pick whip that over to the original group property. We can adjust the value accordingly by adding or subtracting so of course you can grab your group two, duplicate that. Now you have a group three. Again, you can append math to alter the size, the offset, the stroke width to get a cool value. And then when you play these circles, you'll see that you have the beginnings here of a pretty interesting animation, which hopefully you'll agree is relatively simple to start. So the possibilities here are endless. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.